KUAM News Headlines is presented by Calvo's Insurance, serving Guam for 80 years. Matson and the Adai Tano Program. All new 2018 Kona by Hyundai, available at Cars Plus. IP&E, fueling excellence. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And King's Restaurant, located in Timuni and Dededo. Always open, always local. Ahead on primetime, it's used to house victims of abuse. Now an investigation underway after allegations of sexual abuse at a local shelter. Plus, a concerning rise in the number of cocaine cases has local and federal law enforcement on alert. And there is growing support in the legislature to repeal Guam's first ever sales tax. Good evening. Nick Delgado. We begin with rather disturbing news dealing with Sanctuary Incorporated, their shelters, typically a safe haven often known for taking in youth and victims of violence. Now, reports of sexual assault have put the community-based organization on high alert. Carmen Talahi reports. Allegations of sexual assault happening at an unlikely place, a shelter many victims of abuse call home. I was informed um, last night that there were uh, some allegations that were made in one of our shelters, but I want to rest assured and tell everyone that it is not the shelter where we hold our children. Executive Director Therese Ariola confirms with KUAM that it did not happen at the emergency children's shelter Sanctuary is known for, but instead a shelter for adults, 18 years or older, who are transitioning to a self-sufficient life. Though unable to share the details of the incident, Ariola confirms that a preliminary investigation finds it's not a member of her staff. The preliminary um Reviews show that it has nothing to do with staff violating clients at all, but rather possibly the opposite. The allegations were reported to GPD. Ariola understanding that sanctuary is held to a higher standard, hoping to reassure the public that they are doing everything in their power to address the issue. Once a sexual assault um, allegation is launched, everything goes into play. We follow the protocols. We bring in our, our partners, GPD, the DART team, and uh, we make the process take, take care of things in that, in that manner, the legal process. In our side, administratively, I will deal with things uh, the most severe possible if needed because we have zero tolerance for any crimes of any sort here at Sanctuary. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Carmen Victoria Trilahi. Three people under arrest after a teen told police she was sexually molested by a man known to her for nearly three years. Ewo Moses and Honoria Tommy are charged with first-degree criminal sexual conduct. John Tommy charged with third-degree criminal sexual conduct. The 18-year-old victim alleged the incident started when she was 15. The victim told police Moses would allegedly threaten her to engage in sexual acts. He, along with Honoria, are accused of recording it and sharing it with John who was also accused of molesting the teen. Police found some of the videos posted on Facebook. The suspects told police they only had sex with the victim after she turned 18 and that it was consensual. Authorities also learned another victim it was sexually abused three years back when she was only 12. A 40-year-old man is the latest person arrested in connection to GPD's largest cocaine bust ever. Carl Santiago again is charged with possession of a Schedule II controlled substance with the intent to deliver possession of the drug and possession of a firearm without ID. Court documents state police found a kilogram of cocaine and a 25 caliber pistol while searching his home. The drug raid was carried out after police received information from Robert John Afison that he sold a, quote, brick of cocaine to the suspect. Afison is facing drug charges along with four others after last week's massive cocaine bust in Inarahan. The complaint also states Uggen admitted to possessing the drugs and the firearm. There's been no cutting down when it comes to the surge of cocaine cases on Guam. The recent major bust down south no doubt is keeping local and federal authorities on their toes. Keanu Mandiola has more as two of the handful arrested have been released from custody. They call it the rich man's drug, and for good reason. Nearly half a million dollars of cocaine was discovered and confiscated from an Inarahan home on Friday, May 18. As a result of the seizure, GPD officers arrested five individuals. 45-year-old Robert John Afison, 35-year-old Jonathan Meno Manglotnya, 47-year-old John Akfaji Tanatongo, 41-year-old Monica Ann Kinata, and 24-year-old George Carlos Paulino Flores. 
According to court documents, Afeisen was the alleged source of the cocaine. When a search warrant was executed on his home on May 17, Afeisen was taken into custody, as well as Manglotnia and Flores, who were also at the residence. There, GPD recovered more than 35 pounds of the drug. It was also discovered that Afeisen had recently given 4 to 5 kilos of coke to his neighbor Tanatongo the previous week. After a subsequent search on Tanatongo's residence, methamphetamine and cocaine residue was found, and his partner Kinata had admitted to smoking ice the night before. Each was charged with illegal possession of a Schedule II controlled substance. Afeisen additionally charged with illegal drug possession with the intent to distribute, Tanatongo with hindering apprehension, and Flores with violation of a court order. All five appeared before the Superior Court last Friday. Afeisen was released on a 100,000 personal recognizance bond and Manglotnia on a 5,000 PR bond. The other three continue to remain in custody. The case still remains under investigation. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Kiani Mendiola. And if you are or you know anyone struggling with this or any drug, there is help available. You can find a full list of services offered on KUAM.com. The fate of Raymond Martinez and Juanita Moser now rests in the hands of a jury. Closing arguments for Moser's counsel, David Lujan, were finished Monday. To recap, the couple was being charged with conspiracy of possession of meth with the intent to distribute after eight pounds of the drug was found in their car during a California traffic stop in June 2015. The defense team is arguing that the defendants were entrapped as part of the government's setup using criminal informant Henry Alvandia. The case has now been handed over to the jury for deliberations. Did Jeremiah Sazaki really mean to kill GPD officer Benny Babalta, or was it all just a setup? Defense attorney Doug Moylan continuing cross-examining Babalta, asking about the alleged threats on his life by Sazaki back in 2012. Babalta testifying that he was only aware of the death threats that GPD Sergeant Flickinger told him about, but never experienced any direct threat from Ms. Sazaki. Moylan asked if Abata was ever aware of the role of key witness Janessa Corpus, who was allegedly approached by Sazaki to lure Babalta and set him up. The defendant, believing Babalta was dirty, expected him to coerce Corpus into having sex with him and would then use that against him. But Babalta states that he was unsure of that. Additionally, the witness was also questioned about the prior arrest of a Sazaki that led to the alleged plot, where he believed GPD officers had set him up, planting a gun and drugs. But Babalta said the hundred, he's 100% certain that no evidence was planted at the scene. Sazaki is being charged with conspiracy to commit murder and terrorizing both as felonies. Trial is ongoing. We first told you about a man wanted for multiple burglaries being captured over the weekend. Now new details released as court documents list two people in custody. Police say Gerald Joseph Alvarez self-surrendered to authorities on Friday. He, along with Joshua Muffness Tatauto, are each charged with two counts of burglary, theft of property, and criminal trespass. Court documents state police responded to a double burglary in Zonia in early April. The victim reporting the suspects broke into her car before using the garage remote inside there to get into the home. It's there they then are accused of taking multiple items, including the victim's wallet, credit cards, and other items valued at more than $2,700. The suspects admitted to police they went driving around Pago Bay looking for cars left unsecured. Two men are accused of trying to steal more than $500 worth of oxen palm corn beef. Jesse Santos and Alan James Tovez are each charged with robbery, child abuse, and retail theft. Documents state one suspect started running out of Vinny's Martin Barragato with three cases of corned beef in hand. An innocent bystander tried to stop them until he saw what appeared to be a handgun on the passenger seat of the getaway car. Police caught up with the suspects and chased after them. They eventually got out of the car after crashing in Dededo. They took off on foot. That's when police say Santos was located and started yelling, quote, OK, I give up. Tovez, along with two minors, were also found uh, in a jungle area nearby. The judiciary says there's no link between a survey published by the Guam Bar Association and the termination of former ethics prosecutor Bruce Bradley. According to Attorney Jay Ariola, the judiciary holds that anonymous comments calling Bradley, quote, a bully and vindictive was not the reason he was escorted off court grounds. Though members of the Judiciary and Ethics Committee were present at the annual meeting and are aware of complaints in the survey. Ariola noting that ethics is a major concern for practicing attorneys, and after appointing a new ethics prosecutor, there is potential the Guam Bar president may appoint a new ethics committee to hold the ethics prosecutor more accountable. Well, two members of the Guam National Guard's 94th Civil Support Team are set to provide support in Hawaii. This is in response to the fallout of the eruption of the Kilauea volcano in Big Island. 
the soldier and airmen will leave next week. They will spend about a week out there assisting. Well, stick around for more news here on Primetime. You're watching KUAM. There are more ways to experience KUAM news than any other source on Guam. Download the KUAM News app for your Apple or Android device for 24-7 news, sports, videos, weather, streaming with KUAM radio, and important news alerts. And stay connected at home with Guam's first app for Apple TV. All available now from the App Store. Half the day, I'm in the club. Half the day, welcome to Two Lovers Point. Half the day, I'm in the club. In this divided world, there are still things that unite us. Great music, thrilling games, and the love for that perfect burger. Ruby Tuesday Guam, for the love of burgers menu. For a limited time, get an amazing burger for just $11.99. Lunchtime at Ruby Tuesday Guam. Manukai Athletic Club and Manholden Swim Club present Guam Cocos Crossing 2018 on Sunday, May 27th. Experience the excitement of an ocean swim in the beautiful waters of Cocos Lagoon. Open to swimmers age 9 and up. Choose from three options, a 3K race, 5K race, and 10K race. Register online at guamcocoscrossing.com by Wednesday, May 23rd. Supported by these fine sponsors. Here's to 60 years of Pizza Hut, to original pan, to stuffed crust, and to the best of both. The new double cheesy crust pan pizza with stuffed crust cheese baked just inside the golden edge of original pan. Here for a limited time, no one out pizzas the hut. to experience Guam via KUAM News, giving you what you want, when you want, and how you want it. From smart devices, Alexa, what's in the news? Here's your flash briefing. Over the web, on mobile, on streaming platforms, with immersive, interactive formats, and via social media where it's more than just content, it's conversation. More ways to keep you informed and entertained whenever you want it, wherever you are, on whatever device you're using. Welcome back. The very controversial situation facing the Chamorro Land Trust Commission will be put up for public scrutiny tomorrow, and the community's input is being sought to help straighten out what's proving to be a very embarrassing issue. Chris Barnett reports. A three-part oversight hearing on the Chamorro Land Trust Commission starts tomorrow with Land Committee Chair Senator Tom Atta saying he's calling all CLTC applicants to the Guam Legislature with testimony starting at 5 p.m. Tell me your experience, good or bad, uh, with the program. And, uh, of course, I'm expecting that there'll be a lot of people, so we're going to have to limit it to tell me your, your concerns in, in five minutes or less. CLTC applicants can also submit written testimony at the hearing or by way of email to office at senatorada.org. Tomorrow's hearing, the first of three hearings Ada is holding after Senator Frank Ogden called for an oversight in the wake of controversy at the CLTC, as reported on KUAM News. Ada drafting legislation to address some of the controversy, including possibly amending the law to allow the transfer of CLTC leases where the original applicant is still living. That leaseholder possibly should be allowed to, get to, to give it to his son or his grandchild who, 
who also is eligible and has signed up and is number 8,000 on the list. An opinion from the AG says CLTC leases cannot be transferred while the original applicant is still living, and she deemed leases in this category null and void. Now, Ada's colleague, Senator Regine Bisco Lee, took over her mother's application and signed a CLTC lease for Barragata Heights property just six months after doing so. The senator's mother is still alive. Lee said she's awaiting further guidance from the CLTC and the AG on the status of her lease in the controversial area. Ada also calling for review and possible revisiting of the law that created the Chamorro Land Trust. It's been 23 years since its enactment, and there really hasn't been any changes. The second hearing will be held on Thursday and focuses on residential and agricultural leases and whether or not they're in compliance with the law. For Guam's News Network, Chris Barnett reports. There is growing support in the legislature to repeal Guam's first ever sales tax due to be implemented in October. This is on the heels of a public auditor's report that suggests DRT could be collecting a lot more in taxes, which some senators believe negates the need for a tax hike. Nessa the Contra reports. A new OPA report on real property tax assessments and exemptions indicates there has been almost $19 million in revenue leakage from non-collections over the past five years and more than $21 million in foregone revenues due to various exemptions. Public Auditor Doris Flores Brooks. The challenge in Gov Guam is the lack of interface with so many different systems. And because the computers don't talk to each other, Auditor Maria Bagana says DRT can't be sure they're tracking all the potential new revenue. The new buildings that were, that were constructed, we cannot really ascertain if these new buildings have been included into the tax roll because they do not interface. She says DPW provides the raw data of the construction, but Revintax has to manually go into the system to find it. Then there are the so-called John Doe's, the owners of 6,000 properties that have been identified but with no records on who owns them. That's down from 10,000 in 2012, but still represents millions in uncollected taxes. Then there's the property tax rate itself, the lowest in the country. Brooks says 30,000 taxpayers pay literally little to nothing. 5,000 homeowners do not pay any tax whatsoever, and another 25,000 pay $100 or less. The legislature has passed four laws to raise real property tax, but because senators tinkered with the formula, in the end it did not result in any revenue increase, says Auditor Luella Terlahi. Appraised value multiplied by the assessed rate to get your assessed value, then you multiply it by your tax rate to get what's taxed due. But within that form year, once you, they increase one, um, one rate, they'll, they'll lower the other rate. Four attempts to adjust the real property tax did not result in any material increase in revenue. Still, Brooks says, because we won't know the true impact of the Trump tax cuts until they're in effect for a full year, she says the 2% sales tax is probably needed to keep the government afloat. Senator Michael Sanicholas disagrees. He's been convinced all along that stronger collection is what's needed. With the recent audit reports, it's become evident that that is in fact the case. And uh, instead of raising taxes on our people, let's bring that money in and make sure we're able to make ends meet that way. San Nicolas introduced a bill to repeal the 2% sales tax almost immediately after it was passed. Now he believes he's got the votes to remove it before it can go into effect on October 1st. Based on some communications we've been having, we may have the eight votes necessary to pass the bill, and we may in fact have the 10 votes necessary for an override. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Lacanto. Well, those plastic bags used to carry out items from grocery or mom-and-pop stores may soon be banned here. The legislature is expected to take action on Senator Regine Bisco Lee's bill that imposes the restriction on retailers and restaurants with very limited exceptions. If it becomes law, the plastic bag ban would take effect in January 2021, according to Lee. Guam is the only U.S. territory that has not moved on plastic bag legislation. Back to this idea of a throwaway society and the fact that we are so careless and just totally don't think about the impact of our actions today and then what that's going to the impact that's going to have on on future generations and the fact that um, as was stated in 2050 there may be more plastic per metric ton in our ocean than fish lee says several local retailers are already promoting the 
use of reusable bags. If the ban goes into effect, she expects many businesses will begin using reusable bags available for customers. Meanwhile, lawmakers discussed several other bills, including a measure by Senator Joe S. and Augustine to raise a compulsory school age to 18 from the current 16. Session is set to resume tomorrow with a possible vote on various bills. More than 300 students at the University of Guam graduated during the university's commencement ceremony Sunday. It was Dr. Robert Underwood's final commencement ceremony as the university's president. He retired its next month. Underwood gave a passionate commencement address, his final farewell, as he shared with the students a message of strength to help them towards their next journey in life. IT &E opens its doors in its newest retail store in Guam's neighboring island of Rota. Located in the Sinapalo Safeway building, the store showcases a wide range of today's most advanced phones. Paired with personalized customer service and interactive displays, IT &E hopes to encourage customers to explore the world and make connections that matter. Well, sports is coming up next, but first, here's a look at your island weather. Where will your sip take you? You're going to need more than an oil change. Okay. Okay. Try our new slushies at McDonald's. Tropic Twist, Blue Raspberry, and Cherry Limey. Perfect for summer for a limited time. Super Sale event. Enjoy huge savings on our most popular Samsung Galaxy smartphones. But this offer won't last long. So drop into a GTA store today. Smiling is a natural response to joy, happiness, and excitement. Your smile reveals a lot about who you are. A healthy, beautiful smile can brighten your appearance and be an invitation to conversation and friendship. It is often one of the first things people notice about you. Now, thanks to the advancements in dentistry, you can have the smile you have always wanted, giving you an improved smile that looks and feels great. My silver fillings that I have, they're getting older in my mouth and I need to replace them. So I've started to do that and I've replaced them with the white fillings and I've had really great success with that. It looks good, they feel natural, and it kind of goes hand in hand with the bleaching. I want my, a white look all around my mouth. to 60 years of Pizza Hut, to original pan, to stuffed crust, and to the best of both. The new double cheesy crust pan pizza with stuffed crust cheese baked just inside the golden edge of original pan. Here for a limited time, no one out pizzas the hut. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J. What's up, Guam? Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports. Thanks for watching. I have some double I, double AG high school track and field results from Guam High to get to in just a bit. But first off, some wrestling from Leo Palace. Check it out. The region's top wrestlers met on the mats in the United World Wrestling Oceania Championship held at the Leo Palace Resort. 
The event was open to licensed UWW competitors who were registered with their national federations, wrestlers from Guam, American Samoa, Australia, Federated States of Micronesia, Marshall Islands, New Zealand, Palau, and Tahiti competed in freestyle and Greco-Roman wrestling. The Guam Amateur Wrestling Federation hosted this year's tournament, which featured 70-plus wrestlers in both male and female divisions. Competitors under the age of 18 earned points towards qualifying for the Youth Olympic Games to be held in Buenos Aires. Guam took home nine gold medals in the freestyle event. Men's division, Ethan Agagi won the 65 kilo class, finishing 4-0 at the tournament. Agagi made the trip back home to get in some time on the mat as he tries to qualify for the 2020 Olympic Games. John Tuck put down the UFC gloves and put on his wrestling shoes to take the gold in the 79 kilo class. Tuck defeated FSM wrestler John Tulentru. John Rojas took the 74 kilo gold medal against Tahiti's Tumairoa Nordman. Junior division wrestlers Guam's Lynch Santos won the gold in the 65 kilo division. Santos beat out American Samoa wrestler Orion Liaitua. Paul Uggen took the junior 70 kilo class. Uggen beat out FSM's Enfield Mike for the gold medal. Gavin Witt won the gold in the 55 kilo class for cadets after earning the win over Luke Hopkinson from New Zealand. Women's division Mia Aquino defeated Australia's Jessica McBain via points for the gold in the 55 kilo division. Her sister Raquela Aquino took gold in the 57 kilo class. Paulina Duenas took home gold in the 50 kilo division for juniors. Double I double AG all island track and field from Guam High, boys 100 meters, First place went to Jalen Dowdell with a time of 11.27 from Guam High. Taking home the silver medal was Sincere Powell at 11.42 from Guam High. Carl Zagata took home the bronze medal with a time of 11.43 from Simon Sanchez. Boys won 10 meter hurdles. Urgil Sanchez took gold at 16.54 from Simon Sanchez. Carl Zagata also representing Sanchez took silver at 16. Point five nine. Carlson Ponce took home the bronze at 16.88 for Ukudu. Girls 100 meter hurdles, Rochelle Tagati 16.4 from JFK. Danika Kakayan from Ukudu took silver at 17.11. Katrina Penaflor from Simon Sanchez finished with bronze at 17.99. Girls Javelin, Narissa Blas took first with a distance of 93 feet from JFK. Teammate Janisha Laleo took silver at 90 feet. Alexandria Cruz from Ukidu finished in third with a distance of 88 feet. Girls high jump, Guam High's Alexia Brown took the gold medal with a height of five feet. Deshani Cruz from Ukidu took silver at 4'8". Malia Wilson took home bronze from Guam High at 4'6". Girls 3,000 meters, first place went to Janelle Ngara at 12.04.38 from Guam High. Second place went to Emma Sheedy at 12.04.39, also from Guam High. This year's bronze medalist, Elizabeth Quintaniza, 12.27.81 from Southern High. Minami Kramer came in fourth at 12.37.87 for Ukudu. In bowling news, Dante Godoy and Nick Gutierrez claimed the monthly Pinpoint Guam King of Prince of the Lanes titles for the month of May. Godoy beat out 7th seed Gregory Borja with a 289 game, putting together 10 strikes in a row before leaving a pin 10 in the 11th shot. 2nd seed Nick Gutierrez edged out 7th seed Mergrace Hernandez. The match went all the way down to the final frame as Hernandez forced Gutierrez to spare for the title. Gutierrez delivered, converting a 6-10 to claim his first title since 2010. Well, that's going to do it for sports. We're back right after this. In this divided world, there are still things that unite us. Great music, thrilling games, and the love for that perfect burger. 
Ruby Tuesday Guam for the love of burgers menu. For a limited time, get an amazing burger for just $11.99. Lunchtime at Ruby Tuesday Guam. Our mighty, mighty SUV mega sale is going on now at Cars Plus, and you're going to save big with cash back on every purchase. Get to Cars Plus and shop our great selection of Hyundai Santa Fe's, Tucson's, and the all-new Kona, Guam's most affordable SUV, or our full line of Jeeps, like a new Jeep Renegade, save six grand, or a new Jeep Cherokee, save forty-five hundred with rates as low as one point nine nine percent APR for qualified buyers. It's Cars Plus, mighty, mighty SUV mega sale. Cars Plus, driven by you. Take heed, Taco Bell's Naked Chicken Chalupa Menace is back, along with a spicy new Wilder version, a.k.a. the Hot Daddy-O, a.k.a. the Flaming Phoenix, a.k.a. the Spicy Chicky Choop Choop. At least, that's what the youths call them. I have literally never said Spicy Chicky Choop Choop before. You just did, Jerry. You just did. So when it comes to Taco Bell's mild or wild Naked Chicken Chalupas, heed my advice and say no to spice. Brought to you by the Council for Eating Fried Chicken the same way you always have, and not Taco Bell. Summer's right around the corner, but first shift into spring with Triple J. With zero down, 1.9% financing and easy trade-in. Get into our big boy truck, the Ford F-150, starting at $2.98 per paycheck. Car and drivers, 10 best. Mazda CX-9 at $2.42 per paycheck. The Mazda 3 sedan at only $1.37 per paycheck. Or the North American Car of the Year, the 2018 Honda Accord at only $2.16 per paycheck. Visit us online at TripleJGuam.com and get pre-approved instantly. Trade-ins welcome. Some conditions apply. See dealer for details. Triple J Auto Group. Customers first. And before we close out the news tonight, our latest round of birthday shoutouts from the Cold Stone Crew Marie Birthday Club. Happy 21st birthday to Logan Twilliger. We love you very much from Mommy and Daddy. William Twilliger, happy birthday. We love you always from your family. Peggy Padilla, happy birthday and God bless you, my beautiful wife. We love you with all our heart. Love Daddy and Jenica and Jaden, Jaisha and Jericho. Savannah Lintadegui, happy birthday. We love you and many, many more to come. Love Mom, Dad, Noah, Grandma, Grandpa, Keisha, Nina Nish, you know, Kevin, and your Guam, Cali, and New York family. And to our very own Carlito Rosansky, happy birthday to you. Also, happy belated birthday to Johanna Dela Cruz and happy belated Kevin Ray Billo. Happy belated 22nd to Keolani. Also, happy belated 12th birthday to John Paul. Love and miss you from Dad. Mahana Vega Freya, happy belated 11th birthday, and congratulations on your 5th grade accomplishments and rewards from your Emmy Wuhan Elementary School. Great job. We love you so much from mom, dad, and the whole family. It's a long time ago, happy belated from your family, especially Grandma Janet. Remember, you can be part of the Code Stone Crew Marie Birthday Club. Register online, KUAM.com. Be sure to include your photo, your name, and your birthday. And that's my time here in the news desk, but stay tuned. Next up, Nestor has his commemorative special, Pop Culture, Celebrating 50 years of Pepsi Guam. Closed captioning is brought to you by IT&E. Pop Culture, celebrating 50 years of Pepsi on Guam. Presented by Calvo Enterprises. Special thanks to... Pepsi Bottling Company of Guam is celebrating its golden anniversary, 50 years as the top-selling soft drink brand in the Pacific. General Manager John DeKnight explains how it all began here. Pepsi started in 1968. Um, at that time, it was um, uh, the